Hello there, my name is Tabucho. I usually go by the name Savvy or Savvy3D. You can call me Savvy. I am a 3D artist and game developer who specializes in 3D characters, usually in the style of semi-realism, mostly creatures and fantasy characters like these. Most of the characters I make are game-ready assets, retopologized, textured, and rigged, ready for all sorts of use in games. Others are usually sculpts that are later thrown into Photoshop for final details. For example, this One Piece fan art that I did of Monkey D. Luffy, I sculpted everything in ZBrush and I threw it into Photoshop for final rendering. I also did the same thing with the previous sculpt that you saw of a predator or slash young Yauja, which just so happens to be one of my favorite cinematic creatures. I am happy to say that I have joined the SA Anatomy team. I will be focusing mainly on animal anatomy sculpts and hopefully more. I'm excited for you guys to see all the great things we will be working on. And without further ado, here is a showcase video of the first mountain lion sculpt I did within SA Anatomy. Because I know that I'm not entirely used to working on animal anatomy, I began by gathering as much information as possible. So a lot of reference images, watching videos on animal anatomy, and studying how a big cat moves and how most of its muscles would work. So day one of this project was all about gathering information on the animal that I was going to sculpt. But even after all the information gathered and after studying this animal's anatomy, I knew that it would be much safer to block out the model before the actual sculpt. And that marks the beginning of day two, which is the block out process that you see right now. So as you can see here, I worked on basic shapes. Things I knew I would be able to edit with ease without having to worry about major details. Now, I know that some of these shapes are not entirely accurate, but my goal here was to get them close enough to the accurate look. I mainly focused on parts of the body I feared would be a hassle to sculpt, given their sizes and shapes. I like this method of working because it helps me a lot in the sculpting phase because I wouldn't have to worry about sculpting large details like the trapezius for example or doing the lats which I knew would be would have a small issue when sculpting considering the way this model is posed with its arms so close to said lats. I believe the face and feet were the parts I spent the most time on. And that was because those were the parts that I focused a lot on when studying my references. There were some subtle differences in the hands and feet of the lines and cougar references I had to the skeleton I was working over. And so I spent a little more time on those to make sure that I got them right. Like I said before, blocking out helps remember details that could be easily missed and forgotten when sculpting. Like right here, I add the details behind the ear I would like to appear in the final sculpt. Next, I make the model look a little better by adding in a little more detail that would make the blockout feel more complete, such as some small muscle details here and there. And now the block of phase is finally complete and separate blocks are ready to be merged, remeshed and finally sculpted. Now in the sculpting phase is where I had my most fun. I experimented with different brushes to properly bump out the muscles. But in the end, I stick to the brushes that I normally use when sculpting, which are the simple standard brush, the clay brush, and your standard smooth brush. At this point, I was just working on a rough sculpt. I was mainly using the clay brush and also toggling between clay and standard brush. I was also checking back with my references to make sure that I was still getting things right. So 
Sculpting the face was rather interesting. I enjoyed my time learning about all the connections that the muscles had on the face. This also took quite some time to work on, not too long, but this was because the design had a mixture of both muscle and bone on the face. You could still see the zygomatic bone protruding on the side. But this isn't the only design that I have. There is a second mountain lion head sculpt that I worked on. I originally planned to place the sculpt over the skull as a separate object. But in the end, I chose to stick with the muscle and bone sculpt because I felt like I needed something more challenging. Working on the muscles wasn't difficult at all. In fact, those are the parts that I enjoyed the most. All the details that I got from the references that I had and all the things that I knew about the anatomy. All that information helped me sculpt the muscles much better. Now, the next few minutes is just going to be me sculpting and some music playing in the background. You can skip all the way to the end to see the end result of the sculpt.
Okay, so this is the final sculpt. I added in some extra details such as uh, lines going across the body, uh, some ribs, you can see some ribs uh, through the muscles. I defined some of the muscles, some of the body parts as well. Uh, added in extra features like uh, the eyes, simple eyes, uh, added in a multi-resolution modifier, uh, sculpted it just a bit, um, flattened some pieces of the eye to make it a little more realistic, mir mirrored it, and uh, a little more detail on the feet, just a few fixes actually, and yeah, that's about it.